What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Let's Play Plants vs. Zombies. This is episode 8. Last time, we returned, or I should say we, I, I returned from my uh, two-week-long hiatus from the channel. Came back with episode 7. We now have two levels left in the, um, in the nighttime fog pool world. And then after this, we're going to be starting the uh, final world. And then we're gonna be doing the side content, and then the let's play is gonna be done, so we're almost done with the game. But yeah, last time we got the magnet shroom, so let's just get started. Alright. Buckets, normals, cones, and ugh, fucking balloons. Yeah. Uh. Oh, Pogo's too, I didn't even notice that. Great. Alright, alright. Uh, Magnet Shroom is gonna be helpful because I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of bucket heads considering they just gave it to us. Uh, sea Shrooms for sure, Pumpkins for sure, Walnuts for sure. I'm fighting between whether I want to do the Blover or the Doom Shroom. I can't decide. Um, uh, geez. Uh, Blover, honestly, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna need to see the fog. We can rely on lawnmowers if it really comes to that. Yeah, I don't wanna risk having 18 tiles to see with those many difficult zombies on the screen, so. Yeah, I think we'll go with the Blover. It's definitely the best option. Oh, Two waves, huh? Okay. Put a sea shroom down up there. Another game I've been playing recently is um, a Bori. It is a um, horror slice of life RPG based heavily inspired by Earthbound. And I'll be honest with you guys, I think I might have found the RPG that's better than Earthbound. Nostalgia aside, Amori is this- this game is amazing. I have my own- I have a plan to review the game in a video once I'm done playing it. It's 20 hours long, I'm 10 hours in. And man, dude, I have never been more invested in a game's characters in my life. I actively want to see the characters of Amori succeed in their goal. It is- a fantastic game, and the soundtrack is so good. I've never been one to believe that a uh, song from a video game could be one of the best songs of all time, because there's just so many other better examples of actual real-world musicians and music, but I'll tell you what, man, some of the songs in Amori go pretty close. Those songs are really catchy really catchy. I have never been more grasped by a song. I've never been more immersed in a game since C418's Minecraft songs in, in terms of a soundtrack than I have with Amori. Dude, I'm telling you, some of the songs in that game are absolutely, like, they actually like beautiful songs with, like, pianos and stuff. That game's soundtrack is way, way better than it has any right to be. That game is great, though. I cannot wait to finish that. I'm so glad. It came out in 2020. I'm so glad that I'm going in blind. Yes, man. So, some of the horror elements in that game. That game is just sad. It's so sad. Essentially, it's about a friend group who breaks up over the death of the main character's sister. And, like, years later, like, four years later is when we're playing. That's present day. And, uh... The main character, Sonny, is moving away from his home in three days, and he's developed over the years anxiety and depression. His real world, uh, yeah, is Sonny. So he's created this land in his head what, that he goes to when he dreams called the Headspace, where he's taken over by his alternate form in the Headspace, like his kind of perfect version of himself called Amori. And um, him and his friends, your party members are his friends, the, the dream version of the friends. So it's like he gets to go on in his head this, uh, this perfect version 
of his world with all his friends together still, and, you know, everything's wacky, doesn't make any sense, it's all, like, you know, very dream-based. Think Magic Ant from Earthbound if it was a whole RPG world. And then, as the days tick by, till he has to move away from all his friends, or what he has left of his friends, uh, his, the dream, his perfect world, the headspace, starts getting invaded with his, um, dark thoughts, and it's a really good game. It's, it's, uh, the writing in that game is so good. I just got to the point where, uh, the headspace and the real world are starting to conflict with each other, and it's absolutely great. Yeah, I haven't even beaten it yet. I'm only halfway through, but if you check it out, check out Amori if you've been even vaguely interested in it, because I will deliver, and then some. That game is absolutely fantastic. My uh, my friends on Discord would know I've been ranting to them about it ever since I got the game. Now uh, we have pogos to deal with. I don't know why I've been lining up. You know, I've been kind of on autopilot, gushing about Amori. Actually, I need to focus back here. Every single time we're about to hit 200 sun, that fog comes back and resets it back to. All right, where's he gonna be? We didn't bring the cactus in, actually, but we have Lover, so we're fine. Um, no Pogos this round? I'll take that. No Pogos? No Pogos. Alright, cool. I'll take it. I think we can hold these guys off. Magnet Shroom can place down when the bucket heads come, but I think this round we're going to be able to just hold off with just these shrooms. Speaking of which, I'll show you what the Magnet Shroom does. Pretty simple, just takes a metal object away from a uh, zombie at, for a while and then it has a cooldown timer. But yeah, it's also it's very helpful. Magnet streams have saved me tons of times. In every single ranking video I've seen of ranking the plants in this game, they always put magnet streams on the low side, and I don't know why. Especially because magnet streams, um, they can take the helmets off of digger zombies and pull them out of the ground before they can get to the back of your row. Every, everyone kind of craps on um, magnet shrooms, and I don't know why, because they are super powerful. If used correctly, that is. Uh, there's a Plants vs. Zombie YouTuber I, watch the, I like to watch. He does challenge videos. His name is Natera. He's, he's been missing for like a couple months now. But he's back. He's coming back, which is nice. Speaking of missing people, actually, um, I, I know I'm kind of scattered, but I have a lot to talk about. Um, Here's a trip down memory lane for I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this. Um, you guys remember the channel uh, Danger Dolan or Planet Dolan? You know, like the, the white guy with the blue hat on, and like all the, they like animated questions and stories, like real or fact, like true or fake, true or false kind of like questions. Planet Dolan, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you guys recognize who he is. I used to watch him a lot when I was little. So, as the, as probably, if you know Danger Dolan, that, uh, Planet Dolan, I should say, because it's his second channel where he's from. If you know Planet Dolan, I'm pretty sure you've all heard of Shima Luan, and you're all familiar with her case. She was a female voiceover actress for the, um, for the channel, who voiced the, uh, the cat character, right? And then one day she went missing from the channel, like, eight years ago, and no one on the Dolan team had any idea where she went for years. For years. It's just been this big mystery. Like, people believe there was very convincing theories that she had been stalked and killed, that she had committed suicide, and just, or she, that she had just completely disappeared from the face of the earth. And, like, eight years later, a couple, like, a month ago or so, Dolan uploaded a video finally explaining everything, and she's perfectly fine. She just left because she felt like she wasn't bringing her best to the, to the channel, and she might be coming back. But to have that actually revealed is such a big... I still can't believe that the mystery of Shima Luan is a thing that's, like, public info now that we all know what happened to her. Because she's actually been missing without a single peep. Single peep at all for, like, eight years straight. Eight years straight. It is absolutely wild that we now know what happened to her. Crazy. Yeah, I got, 
I mean, I'm playing Final Fantasy Zombies. I'm talking about all the nostalgic stuff we used to watch on YouTube. Honestly. Lots of good creepy videos as well, like of the wars and stuff. But I might do a video on that, just a one-off video. I mean, this channel is just me doing whatever I want. It might not fit with my game style, but I might do a, a video on just creepy videos and then one those old YouTube man that hit different. Less restrictions. A lot of right, a lot of creepy content on old YouTube, but it was fun. I kind of miss that era of YouTube a lot, as I'm sure all of us do. Darn you, Susan. <sighs> I'm a zombie over here. No, <laughs> oh, no, we got another zombie over here. Alright. Hello, oh, I, I like this one. Hello, this is your mother. Please come over to my house for meatloaf. Leave your front door open and your lawn unguarded. Sincerely, Mom, not the zombies. My stupid friends have made jokes about this stupid note so many times. Alright, this stage is nothing to joke about though. This stage sucks. I hate this stage it's so hard. <clears throat> Why did it get so dark all of a sudden? This can't be good. Oh well, hope you survive the night. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. That's awesome. What do we got here? Digger zombies, coneheads, bucket. Doesn't matter. Auto scrollers. So, as you can see, two waves, and there's a thunderstorm, which means you cannot see the map for half the time. Only when the lightning strikes, which is very, very fun, as you can imagine. The stage is hard. I need to get a, I need to get a plant down here, please, man. I, I really like that. Please. Game. Game. There's a, there's a zombie down there. It's not that hard to. Game. I need I need a. I'm, I'm gonna need a, a plant to put. Game? I'm holding him off with the pumpkin right now, but it's not gonna do much in the long run. Oh my god. This is going so well. I'm not getting any land plants. What is this RNG? This luck is so bad. Oh my god. Okay, start fruit. Uh, 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 there. How are we doing up here? Okay. No! Oh, wrong button. Oh no. Okay, we lost one more. Which is actually a big deal in this stage. Oh, that sucks so much. Alright, let's just start randomly planning. We have to at this point. Starfruit, yes. Should have put them up here. There. Stop giving me lily pads. Oh, that sucks. I will admit, this is one of the stages that's easier on PC because you can move your cursor faster. That's one of the that's one of the um, very few upsides to the original PC release version compared to the Xbox version is that your um, your cursor on this stage moving faster actually helps. But sometimes on PC it moves a little bit too fast. So. Okay. Alright, we've got our main. We got we're for, we're fortified in the back now. This the the trick to this stage is just placing plants randomly. Every single plant in this stage acts as both a meat shield and a damage to shield. There's no line between offense and defense. I probably should have saved that actually. That clover for bloom zombies. I don't know why I didn't. Yo, sorry, I'm, I'm probably gonna be quiet for this level. I'm just focusing on. As you can tell, this is very easy. All right, wave one. Let's see what you got. We do have cactuses in every row, so that's good. Plants, uh, bullying zombies should not be an issue. 
Ooh, that's creepy. I don't like that. I just thought in my head, when am I going to get a seashirt? And then I immediately got one. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know magnet shirts took away the jack in the box box. That's cool. I, I mean, I have said before that you learn something new about this game every single time you play. I think that's true. Like, on the Xbox version here, specifically, there's a rare animation. A very rare chance that a zombie will bite a walnut and he'll be allergic to it and die. The unique death animation, and I've gotten that before while playing this game on Xbox in my own free time. Which I didn't even know about until I saw it on a Reddit post the other day. I followed the website, of course I'm gonna come from Reddit. So Reddit somehow manages to be... It's not as worse. Worse social media is still Twitter, but Reddit's probably up there. I, th I think Reddit's probably three. I think Twitter, and then actually, I don't know. Yeah, I'd say Reddit's third worst. Because you have Twitter, and then 4chan, and then Reddit. And then I think below that is probably Instagram. Actually, no, I'd say, I'd say, actually, let me think about that. I, I would say, um, I don't have, like, any social media at all. So I, I don't even care about social media, but just from what I've seen of it and what I've used of it, my ranking, I don't know, TikTok's pretty bad. All social media sucks, let's be honest. Even YouTube counts, YouTube sucks too. Alright, this stage went way better than it started off, which is very nice. We're okay for the wave, we're literally piled up in the front, they, they can't even get through. Alright. Oh yeah, we're fine. I do aesthetically like this stage though. Uh, fighting the zombies with during a thunderstorm and rain is pretty cool. Alright, nice. And that is the Fog World uh, beat. Level 4, or World 4 is done. And entering is the Cabbage Pult. Pearl's cabbage at the enemy, and I'm about to get so happy when I press this A button and I get to see the nice brightness of the new world. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. Ah, oh, wonderful. I love it. Whoa, they even found a way under your roof. I like the color palette. Right Those are some persistent zombies, dude. I, I never even caught- I don't like the fact that Dave uses this dude that caught me off guard. I'm- I mismanaged now, sorry. You'll need to use cabbage bolts here due to your roof's angle. Remember that and you're good to go. So yeah, as per what Dave said, this world is very interesting. The gimmick here is that our roof on the left side where we're going to be planting our plants is slanted downward. So, plants like pea shooters won't work because they'll shoot forward and just hit the angle on the roof. Cabbage pults, or the catapult uh, kind of plants, will throw over the, um, the upward slant and land on top of the roof to hit zombies. You'll see what I mean in a second here, so we're going to need cabbage pults. Pumpkins. Oh, sunflowers. You can chop off the double sunflower here. Pumpkins. Yeah, there's a, very, there's, a, there's a very specific set of plants you can use on the roof world. Squashes, of course. Um, bungee zombies we have, too. Those guys are new. They, uh, they drop down and they grab zombies and they just pull them up in the air and you never see them again. They just steal them. And they're very hard to kill, too. Uh, chompers, yep. And uh, cherry bombs, why not? You also can't use nighttime plants here because um, they fall asleep in the daytime. This song's also good. I'm gonna let you listen to it.
Man, that's that's the best part right there. That, that little beat drop, I love that. Ah, PBG is such a good game as I love too. I like it. Bless you, Lenorine. You make some absolute great music. All right, double sunflowers. Get those down. Yeah. I, oh, great. Good thing we don't have anything there. But yeah, as you can see, you also have to have pots on the roof to place your plants in. But yeah, as you can see, the way it's slanted, you have to angle it over so pea shooters they'll just shoot from here, and then they'll hit like here, and you won't be able to do anything about it. The divider line is this. Um, this crack in the roof up here by the uh, front row. Hmm? Oh, wait, Conway. And at the moment, we don't have any way to replenish pots, so bungee zombies are a problem. Yeah, this song is definitely one of the best on the soundtrack. I still like uh, the pool theme best. Water Graves, that's still my favorite song in the soundtrack. You can tell because 99% of the pool gameplay this Let's Play was just me not talking, listening to it. I could listen to that song on repeat for hours, though I love Water Graves. It, the instruments using that song is just so pleasing to hear. But yeah, it's so nice to see the sun again and have sun dropping. And yeah, I like the way perspectives played within this too. Obviously, you have the the roof slant, and you also have the um, the big um, pole over there with the bird's nest on it, blocking your uh, your, your view of the uh, back row a little bit, a tiny bit. So uh, this it incorporates a new mechanic, brings back the old mechanic of the uh, first two worlds, and also adds in the new mechanic of the uh, blocking your screen off a tiny bit with the fog. Very good for this uh, final world, which I haven't mentioned yet. This is the last world of the game, but we're far from done. Technically, we're, we're decently far. There we go. Um, now we have pots. Now, uh, bungee zombies taking pots aren't a problem. Flower pot lets you plant on the roof. Nice. Hey, neighbor, got some new items for sale. Ooh, that vibration on the Xbox controller was really hard. I almost dropped that. All right, now we have page uh, two of his um, shop. So we have roof cleaners, which are just lawn mowers, at such pool cleaners for your roof. And then we have two new special plants. We're gonna be buying the roof cleaners. There we go. All right. Oh, coming back to javelin zombies, huh? That should be fine. We're 23 minutes in. Yeah, we can keep going. Also, notice that the pots have little faces on them, too, at the base. It's another thing I didn't know until I found out that the uh, lily pads had eyes on them. Going back to what I was saying last episode, PvZ2 is kind of a mixed bag for me. The gameplay is not good, but I also like the game. It's so everyone says it's not microtransaction. You know, there's tons of microtransactions to it, though, but you don't actually need to pay anybody any anything to beat the game, and that's true. But the way difficulty is is made in PvZ2 is they just stockpile zombies on you. And they introduce power-ups, which allow you to clear out zombies on the screen, or at least a large chunk of zombies on the screen. And because of that, um, and those cost real-world money to buy those, to get upgrades to those um, superpowers. Which means, unless you want to spend actual hours of your life 
grinding on the exact same Plants vs. Zombies 2 stage over and over again until you eventually beat it, you have to pay at least $5 max to beat the game, which is just petty. But it's also EA. I don't know what you expected. EA stopped being good after the Xbox 360, let's be real. You know, EA's last good game was um, SSX3 on, on uh, Xbox GameCube and PS2, right? But would, would PS2 have been... Yeah, PS2 would have been when... No, P, no actually PS3. PS3, because PS2 would have been when the um, first Xbox came out. Yeah, because GameCube came out, then Twilight Princess got tacked onto it. Yeah, okay. So yeah, PS3. PS3 is such a weird console. I don't know anybody who ever owned a PS3. I know people who own PlayStations, PlayStation 2s, and then they jumped right to 4 and 5. But I, 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 I like, I've vaguely ever heard of people who own PS3s. Even though there are some pretty good games on PS3, I've just personally never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, 25 Sun, uh, let's plant some new pots down, shall we? I don't, I don't think I need to show up when they do, it's pretty self-explanatory, but... Yeah, I've been doing it for every other plant in the game, why stop now? on that because in the long run we'll be able to make more sun later. We can sacrifice a plant or two with a pot for 25 sun. Not a big deal. But whoops, I put that guy in the wrong spot and he's gonna get eaten. Darn it. My cursor flipped over too fast. First wave, let's see now. Um, okay, thanks. So much fun, just having this stuff and I can do about that. Cabbage poles are pretty much just your roof pea shooters. They do a little bit less damage than a pea shooter, which kind of sucks, but it's really good about it. It, adds a, it offers a nice challenge, which is all the final world really needed anyway. Yeah, you can actually place pots up on the roof, the upper row here. So you can actually start pushing them back, but that won't happen for a while. If ever. It's a, actually, it's a lot easier to stay on the down low here. I kind of just snipe the zombies. It's way easier to do it that way. I'm not sure why I just repeated myself twice, but here we are. Especially because um, if you stand here low and you can have the tall nuts in the front here and then you can just start pushing it back with tall nuts instead. It makes it a lot easier than trying to hold them off with other uh, plants. Should have put it here. That 
was my mistake, I didn't hit the bucket head until it was too late. And these double sun clocks to corner to retrace them. They're still extremely cracked dogs, don't get me Alright, final way, let's do this shit. We'll put a chomp here just to catch it on all the time. Okay, uh, Okay, um, that was weird. I just heard a weird noise in my. I'll just, I'll, why not? Yeah, no, I'll just jump right here. Alright. Ugh, new plant. There we go. Sorry, that noise kind of threw me off. Um, <clears throat> Colonel Pulp flings corn kernels and butter at zombies. Yeah. Uh, the Colonel Pulps are very helpful. Oh, lighter zombie. New, uh, new type. Okay. He, um, he sucks. He takes his ladder and he puts it in front of a plant and he just climbs the ladder and then drops it on the other side. And that wouldn't be so bad, except for the fact that the ladder stays there even after he dies. And it, just, it means it just opens up in a, a giant hole in your defenses and it really sucks. I hate ladder zombies. But in a good way, I'm glad I hate them because it, it's a nice change of pace in terms of difficulty. What more do I want here? I just... Ah, screw it. We'll do cherry bombs. We don't, the biggest threat is ladder zombies. We're in no rush. I think I'm gonna probably record up to uh, level four in this episode because what we're 32 minutes in. Yeah. It'll probably be around 40 something by the time we do that, which will line up with the other videos. Right? Zombies are coming. All right. Yeah, so the kind of, like I said earlier, we have basically all the plants unlocked now for the perfect roof setup, which you kind of be using a lot is sunflowers, double sunflowers, pots, cabbage pulse, kernel pulse, palm nuts, pumpkins, and some sort of explosive plant or cherry bombs. I, I mean, or pump, um, yeah, or pumpkin, yeah. Either way, or, I mean, or chompers, I, I, jeez, I cannot speak. Some kind of explosive plant or chompers, there we go. Jeez. Probably should have waited on that final sunflower, but yeah, okay, there we go. We're fine, we're fine. If the game tells you, um, and like a tip, that you should always have two rows of sunflowers. I don't, I don't agree with that. One row is fine enough. I think having two of sunflowers pushes you forward too far. Because think about it, especially on this stage, your, our cabbage pulp would start here, which would only leave us room for kernels and then tall nuts. I guess we could put chompers here and tall nuts here, but it just seems like a waste of space for me. At least that's the way I play. But the way I play, for me, works. The way I play, I never end up dying, so I'm going to keep playing the way I play. Yeah, I can really notice... Um, my capture card likes to brighten up the game a little bit, make it a little bit uh, less saturated in the colors on the um, on the recording, and I can tell on OBS, yeah, this game it looks way brighter, which is nice. To, it looks nicer on the way I recorded it, the way uh, my thing upscales it. It looks way nicer. The colors on um, on my actual TV are kind of a little bit darker. You um you can really tell in the chimney. The chimney looks um. For the, the darker blocks on the chimney for you guys looks kind of darker, lightish brown, and for me it's just completely dark red, so, yeah. It looks nice though, it looks way better than it does on my uh, screen. Alright, 
internal pulse. I got distracted by comparing the uh, TV screen colors, so we gotta get back here. But we're fine. So yeah, Colonel Pulse. They uh, throw just their little kernels, which does minuscule damage. But what their big gimmick is they throw butter sometimes, and the butter lands on a zombie that stuns them for a pretty decent amount of um, pretty decent length of time, which makes them very helpful and almost basically pretty much a necessity to the um, to this uh, world. I don't think we've seen one throw butter yet, which is fine. We may have, and I just missed it, but. He's not gonna eat my tunnel pole, but he's not gonna eat the tunnel pole. Yep. Oh, I just barely survived too, that sucks. Be nice to get one down here considering I have 350 subs saved up. Damn. There we go, there, there's one through butter. There's one through butter, that was not English at all, wow. There we go. There's one who threw butter, that's what I should have said. You end up with a lot of unused sun on the roof. Here we are. I was waiting for you. Yeah, why don't you come on by, buddy? I'll just put that guy right there. And yeah, get out of here. He probably would have died anyway. They don't have a lot of health, but they instantly become your top priority when they show up. Right there. Nothing to deal with. No. Maybe we won't go next level. I don't know. We're already 37. We, we might stop here. If this level's over. I think for future I'm gonna I'm gonna um, do this and then put chompers where my pelmets are. I'm gonna put the pelmets up in the front here. Uh, that's my, my game plan for going forward. But I didn't expect this level to be bad. It's kind of an introduction to the Colonel Bolt, so it wouldn't have been fair to go too difficult with it, which is fine. Uh, so yeah, I'll start now. I'm just sitting here collecting sun at this point. <sighs> it's not a sigh of boredom, it's just a sigh of just sitting here and being relaxed, you know? Ugh, man, I just stretched. I didn't wake up that long, but I kind of slept in um, a little bit today. I got up at, I got out of bed at 1 o'clock. So, yeah, I slept in today. They'll be able to kill him because he just got butter. Maybe. I think so. Hopefully. Probably. Don't do it. Ah, oh, suck. But yeah, there you go. I guess I guess we have to show off what the um, ladder zombie did, so I guess it's not all bad. Alright. By pure coincidence, I've noticed I've worn these pants when I've been recording this let's play. By pure coincidence, I, I, I keep wearing these pants with, um, because my, I've been, my recording schedule for this Let's Play has been so scatterbrained, and it's been, like, inconsistent with how, how many days in between it's been. I keep, every, I, I'm pretty sure every single time I've recorded an episode of this Let's Play, I've had these pants on where there's little zippers by where your ankles are. I, I don't know, it's just something weird I noticed. I'm, I'm grasping for commentary, okay? Don't make fun of me. Oh, I thought he would have gotten the to the ladder one no more. I kinda wish I saved him to be honest, it would've fun to blow up all these guys. Oh well. Not a terrible loss. Now it's just kind of a waiting game to see oh, which one of these guys up here dies first. 
but I'm not the one to I have enough stuff in this place, but I don't know. I'll put a pumpkin down just to spite him. Yeah, let's just be mean. That's always fun. Alright, new plant. The coffee bean planted on a mushroom to wake it up, aka or technically mushroom a nighttime plant. So yeah, like I said, um nighttime plants fall asleep in the daytime, you can use those guys to wake them up, which is helpful but not too helpful for um the roof. Not sure what they give it to you here. Once again, one, uh, one of the very few examples of this game, but few enough where it's noticeable, of of a uh plant that's really useless. I don't think we're we'll be using coffee bean probably, just to show off what it does. We'll probably be using it for chill shroom, but, you know, it's not very useful. But yeah, I think, you know, let's, let's, uh, check out our, our zombie down here. Figure that out. There we go. Is there anything in the shop you can buy? 1,000 coins? Yeah, I'm really, uh, can't buy any special plants. Not that it matters. This game's notorious for being kind of grindy with coins if you want to buy everything. But I know a glitch to uh, keep to consistently keep getting over and over again, like for a thousand gems, or like yeah, a, a gem, a way to keep getting a gem over and over again, which is like a thousand coins. So yeah, it's not it's not very hard to grind. If but if you know the glitch, like I do, and I think it works on it does work on Xbox. So yeah, but yeah, um, we're gonna call it there for an episode. Next time on Plants vs Zombies, we. Might finish the game. I don't, actually, you know what? That's that's probably a lie because the last few stages of this world are pretty lengthy. Plus, we have to factor in the uh, final stage as well. So, probably not gonna finish it last uh, to next episode. We'll see. But even then, Let's Play is almost over, so it's kind of weird to think about considering it's taken so long to finish it. But not as long as Banjo. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.